Hey everybody, welcome to rainy Saturday afternoon. Today we're going over some kegging procedures. This is all the stuff I take outside to get ready to do some low oxygen kegging. First, of course, we'll need a keg. Also need a CO2 tank. Need some sanitizer. I like to go with the iodine based stuff, which is low foaming. This is our output hose. You can see it's just a silicone hose with a quick disconnect. I also have a little hose clamp on the other end for my fermenter spigot. And a gas quick disconnect. This is a little tube I made. It's got a uh, garden hose adapter on it. So it allows me to put the liquid inside the keg without foaming up. There you can see that quick disconnect for the garden hose. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is get our water source, just the normal garden hose. Hook it up to the silicone hose I made. We're going to open up the keg and we're just going to fill it up with uh, maybe a gallon of water just to sort of put some water in the bottom of the keg. A little bit leaky on that hose. But it still works. Okay, once we get some water in there, we're gonna pour the sanitizer in. This is a five-star product I use. And uh, as I said before, it's it's no foam, especially if you use that silicone hose thing that I made. Measure out the dose here for five gallons. And, uh, unlike Star Sand, this is only a, a one-use application. I think it lasts about three hours. So you definitely don't want to reuse this stuff. All right, so I'm gonna put this hose back in there and get it underneath the water line. It's gonna allow me to fill it up without creating any suds or bubbles. There we go, you can see the water level coming up here. Okay, now that that's filled, we're just gonna put the ends of the hoses, or basically the quick disconnects down in the sanitizer, just so the, the, the very end is sanitized. You don't have to go anywhere in the tube or anything. That'll come up next. All right, put that in there. And then third one, this is just the gas output quick disconnect. And we let that sit for the usual one to three minutes as any of the homebrew sanitizers work. Okay, so now we're going to close up the keg. We're gonna turn the PRV to the open position. Now we're gonna take our garden hose and I'm gonna take off the sprayer and this happens to be the same size as the post on the kegs, so it's nice and simple. You just put it on there, put some pressure on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the sanitizer out of the PRB. You'll see it there in a second. There it is, it's coming out. Very good. While it's still rolling, I'm gonna close it. Good. Okay, next we're going to blow some liquid out of the gas post. So once I turn the water on, you'll see it coming out. Disconnect the disconnect while it's still running. And I'll take it off. Now we have a completely air-free, oxygen-free keg. Well, pretty much so, but as good as we can get it. Okay, so now we're gonna push out the sanitizer with CO2 gas. 
We started with air, we filled it up with water, sanitizer, and now we're pushing it out with CO2. And it's always good to turn the gas on first before you put the quick disconnect on to stop it from going up in your line. Then we're just gonna put on the output hose, press it on the post and you can see it starts to push out. We'll dial that back a bit. I like to run it at about two PSI. And that would take a little while until you start to hear it sort of kicking up a bunch of foam. That means it's towards the end. This is where I like to turn the gas up. Turn the pressure up to about 10 PSI. We're just going to try to push out all that remaining sanitizer in there. It gets kind of a little bit sudsy at the end, so the higher pressure helps push it out. Okay, we're going to remove the output hose disconnect. So basically we're just pressurizing the keg to 10 PSI at this point. And you'll see why that's important coming up in just a little bit. All right, turn the gas off and now we have a completely purged keg ready for your beer. For those of you who have kegs with dip tubes, there's usually some sanitizer left at the very bottom. So we're gonna use this quick disconnect to help us out. We're gonna turn the keg over and when it's upside down, you're gonna slide the disconnect on and bleed off any extra sanitizer you can get out of there. Just remember not to push out all the CO2 and to repressurize it up to 10 PSI when you're finished. Okay, we're inside by my fermenter. And you can see the keg is right there ready for a gravity transfer. I have uh, some hoses set up. One, the output is going right by the spigot. And then there's one other hose and that's this one I made from an old racking cane. This basically goes from the gas out into the top of the fermenter. So it's going to close our loop, which will keep all the oxygen out and only have CO2 circulating. Okay, so we have our output hose. I just usually hang it over the edge up by the airlock. I'm going to take the airlock out, set it aside. Okay, so the theory is the beer comes out of the fermenter into the keg, pushes out the CO2 back up into the fermenter, creating our closed loop. So this is a reenactment I'm staging here right now, but just wanted to tell you about the sort of tight schedule of events. So our keg is pressurized. First, I'm going to press the liquid out quick disconnect down, which is going to force the gas to shoot through that hose. Basically, it's going to clear all the oxygen out of the hose. I'm then going to connect it to the spigot. Then I'm going to connect the hose that's on the gas out. Let the CO2 gas clear all the oxygen of it and then press it down in the airlock hole, creating our closed loop. So here we go in real time. First, we're going to remove the hose from the airlock hole. Down on the quick disconnect, connect it to the spigot. Usually I don't do the hose clamp during the gas flow, but I just did it now for illustrative purposes. Okay, then we're going to press the gas out, hook it into the airlock hole, and we'll have our closed loop. You can see why we needed the 10 PSI of pressure in the keg. And then uh, when you're ready, you just open up the spigot and the beer flows out. I like to squeeze the the hose just to make sure any bubbles get kind of passed through so you have a nice clean transfer. You may be wondering how do you know when the keg is full? Some people use scales and record the weight of a full keg. You can also shake it a little bit and just try to surmise how much liquid you have in it. I've noticed with the gravity transfer that it, it tends to slow down as your liquid is almost over from the fermenter and you can see the uh, the, the bubbles start to appear when you're almost done. Sometimes I tilt it forward as well. 
it's not that difficult. You'll find a way with your setup. So that is low oxygen kegging, and it really helps with the lifespan of your kegs. They stay fresh a lot longer, preserving the malt and hop flavors. Hope this helps out, and we'll see you next time.